The post-Enlightenment period has brought an acceleration of our understanding of how our world works and how we can solve the biggest problems we face. But our journey hasn't been perfect. Through progress, we have stumbled and fallen. We've made mistakes. Sometimes we learn from our mistakes, but sometimes we don't. Sometimes we are too self-identified with being right that we don't course correct until there are too many mistakes and so much damage that we have to change directions. Are there reasons for this that can go beyond just a mere calibration from error? Can we find a better way forward? If the conclusions that we derive in our understanding of the world do not actually reflect our reality, we need to check our premises. This is a fairly straightforward process when we look at simple proofs that utilize deductive reasoning. But the problems of the modern world are complex and surround concepts such as our health, our wealth, and our sovereignty. We have to take a look at how we evaluate the observations we make in our world and the way we think about such information. As human beings, we use the evidence of our senses to understand reality and the world around us. This serves as a foundation from which we try to acquire knowledge of how our world works and how we navigate within it. Induction represents a process where individuals try to draw and generate knowledge from observations in the world. A conventional understanding of induction is that if a pattern is repeated, we can make generalizations that it will continue to occur. If the sun rises in the morning and has continued to rise every morning, then we think that it will rise tomorrow. The principle of inductivism holds that if we observe a repeated pattern over an increasing period of time without deviation, then we have an increased probability that the pattern will continue into the future. But as we look at the way that we have advanced our understanding of the world around us, we find that induction by itself can be problematic. I mentioned before the example of the sun. Through induction, we predict that the sun rises every morning. This is helpful in prediction, but it is limited in regard to the precision by which that prediction occurs. The sun may not rise at the same time every morning. In the winter in the Northern Hemisphere, it may rise later, and in the summer, it may rise earlier. The lack of precision creates more questions that need to be answered. Gravity is a concept that has been explored for centuries. The fact that objects with weight fall to the ground has been observed over and over. Ideas of what this represents have changed over time. Isaac Newton is famous for his example of an apple falling from a tree. From this, he created theories and explanations that we know today that regard Newtonian physics. Before his theories, technology was more obsolete. However, the advent of his explanations of gravity and other aspects of physics, as well as the advancement of his counterparts in thermodynamics, led to an explosion of new technology and phenomena that had not been seen before. Before the 1940s, no one had ever seen a nuclear explosion. However, theoretical physicists like Niels Bohr and J. Robert Oppenheimer had been considering the possibility of atomic fission well before the horrific scenes of Hiroshima had come before our eyes. Albert Einstein was able to advance theories of general relativity and the photoelectric effect that laid the foundation for what we now know today as quantum mechanics. For centuries, humans couldn't fly, but we could observe the birds and insects that were around us and what they could do. And just because humans never flew before didn't mean that humans never would. Advances in our understanding of aerodynamics and flight ultimately led to the Wright brothers' achievement of flight and ultimately advanced our capacity to travel in the modern age. In medicine, peptic ulcers were believed for decades to be related to the use of stress in spicy foods because a relationship existed between the consumption of these foods and the presence of ulcers. And acids, which reduce the retention of acid in the stomach, also provide relief. However, it was later discovered by Barry Marshall and Robin Warren that a bacteria, Helicobacter pylori, could actually cause ulcers, and that in such instances antibiotic therapy is often necessary to treat the underlying cause of the disease. This was a breakthrough in medicine, but it required something beyond induction and observation. It required conjecture. It required a postulation put forward in the mind of scientists that an infection could be the cause of peptic ulcers. This required inquiry, testing, and trial design to identify that antibiotic therapy against Helicobacter pylori actually helped get at the root of peptic ulcers in a variety of situations. 
If one were to state that the science was clear or the science was settled without conjecture and subsequent explanation identified with the theory that Helicobacter pylori can cause peptic ulcers, one could fall into the trap of coherentism, where stress and spicy food are the primary cause of ulcers and acids are the primary treatment. Better explanations for a unique set of instances would not have been able to occur. Without conjecture, observation merely allows for identification of repeated patterns. Without conjecture, it's really only about predicting future events. Epistemology, the focus of knowledge acquisition, is fundamentally about explanations. It's about understanding reality itself. We understand that the sun rises in the morning and sets in the evening. We know that there is daylight when the sun is visible, shade when the clouds cover the sun, and nightfall when the sun goes down and the moon comes up. We can predict these things with observation. Even animals will modify their hunting and sleeping behaviors predicated upon these patterns. Induction is a process that many animals possess, but there's something more unique that humans do. We create explanations. We can look up to the sky and identify the stars. We can start with explanations of what these stars represent. We may have started out with the idea of constellations and explanations for gods and mythical beings that look down upon us. But through further conjecture and experimentation, we develop better explanations. Better theoretical constructs identify universal laws regarding what planets and stars are and how their behavior is governed. These explanations extend just beyond prediction. They offer a better understanding of what is true in our world and extend our capacity to continuously create better explanations and further theories to question that which remains important to us. The Big Bang remains a strong theory of what created the universe, but none of us ever experienced the Big Bang. However, our capacity to extend our observations into theories that can be tested and extended allow us to develop an understanding of where we come from. Our understanding of who we are has also evolved beyond inductive predictions. Descartes recognized that we experience when we dream, and from that he created an early explanatory theory regarding the dream hypothesis as well as dualism that helped formulate our first attempts at understanding what it means to be conscious. Early psychological theories involving behaviorism discredited consciousness with an idea that all that could be measured regarding human behavior was human action in response to various stimuli. This suggested that human behavior was merely correlated with simple reinforcement and punishment, and that subconscious processes did not play a role in the way that we think or the way that we make decisions in our world. However, advances in technology and our capacity to conjecture allow us to extend beyond this framework of thinking. Explanatory theories of consciousness, such as global neural workspace theory and information integration theory, have allowed us to create conjecture about how behavior states relate to the activity of brain networks, and advances in technology from electroencephalography and functional magnetic resonance imaging have allowed us to gather insights into how such brain network activation relate to the conscious experience. Advances in theoretical conjecture from psychologists such as Jean Piaget have allowed us to create better explanations of cognitive development and understand how childhood development links consciousness initially to perception and action and later toward egocentric behaviors, logical thinking, formulation of abstractions, and self-awareness. The combination of better technology for experimentation as well as improved conjectures regarding development of brain networks and cognitive development have allowed us to have a better understanding of how we come to experience the world as we do. This allows us to better heed the advice of ancient philosophers like Socrates who told us to know thyself and to find ways of using self-reflection and self-work to become more empowered to direct our lives in a way that we find meaningful. Our capacity to be creative and develop conjecture, imagine explanations beyond what we observe, is what allows us to break through the limits of induction. Science fiction is a genre that in many ways is an exercise of speculative epistemology. When we tell stories about a theoretical future, we are not merely entertaining ourselves. We are engaging in an intellectual exercise of creating conjectures, of imagining possibilities that have not yet come to pass. And very often, these conjectures lead to real-world discoveries. Julius Verne wrote about submarines before they were technologically feasible. H.G. Wells imagined atomic bombs before they actually dropped. Mobile phones and 3D printers were used in Star Trek. 
Isaac Asimov described self-driving cars. Touchscreens are used in Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey. When we tell stories about the future, we are not merely entertaining ourselves. We are engaging in the intellectual exercise of creating conjectures, of imagining possibilities that have not yet come to pass. And the remarkable thing here is that these ideas do not always remain fiction. They become explanations, tested and refined through science, engineering, and human history to sometimes lead to real-world discoveries. Just as theoretical frameworks and theoretical science lay the groundwork for new innovations, speculative storytelling lays the foundation for what is possible. It is no coincidence that many of the greatest scientists and engineers of our time were inspired by science fiction. Carl Sagan was inspired by H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds. Elon Musk was inspired by Douglas Adams' Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and Isaac Asimov's Foundation. These individuals sought conjecture of the impossible and created more refined conjecture and better explanations to turn them into knowledge. Our observation and our ability to recognize patterns are important. They are the methods of survival that we can see coming from living creatures that hunt for food and our own children as infants when we help them at the start of their journey to understand the world around them. It appears that our capacity for conjecture and creating explanatory knowledge sets us apart in this world. It has allowed us to think about many things, from early myths of supernatural beings that oversee us, to more complex theories of how we understand how our universe works, what therapies ail our illnesses, and how we better understand the nature of how we think and who we are. What we know from our kids as they grow from infancy and develop language, they tend to favor a particular word. Why? We might make fun of our kids to their attachment to this question, but it reveals to us why it is so important to what makes us human. We don't simply extract the truth from patterns in our world. We create truth by seeking better explanations. It's from these better explanations, and not just predicting patterns, that we develop insight, creativity, and depth. The greatest breakthroughs in human history have not come from passively observing patterns, but from questioning them, explaining them, and constantly challenging them. Mere inductive thinking carries risk of maintaining fixed assumptions about how our world works, but explanatory knowledge elevates us. It allows us to see beyond appearances, challenge existing dogma, and break through outdated ideas. We evolve from bad explanations to good explanations. As we do this, we maintain a healthy respect for the philosophers and early scientists who took the special ability to formulate the first conjectures even if we recognize the flaws in their argumentation. And not all of our old theories are necessarily completely wrong. Quantum physics have advanced our understanding of the nature of the world beyond the foundations of classic mechanics developed by Isaac Newton. But that doesn't mean that Newtonian physics is invalid or that it doesn't help us solve important problems. Oftentimes, when we create conjecture and advance our explanations, we are like the blind men feeling the elephant developing a different understanding of the elephant based on our own ideas, which may not be completely wrong, but don't completely explain what we experience. As such, we can continue to honor our early founders of explanations as who started this unique engine of human progress. To be self-aware is to recognize this power within yourself, to use your capacity to create conjecture, to be an active creator of better explanations. You aren't just an observer of the world, you are an explainer of it. As intelligent beings with the capacity to explain and create, it is of value to acknowledge that our brilliance is not in being correct all the time, but rather toward leaning in and finding the error, the enigma, and the glitch in the patterns that we see, and consistently finding and correcting such errors to create better explanations. This creates your capacity to be enlightened, to live with a mind that does not just see and observe, but understands, creates, and solves problems. If we embrace this kind of thinking, if we demand deep, explanatory knowledge instead of settling for surface-level patterns, we don't just change our understanding, we change the world. I want to thank you for watching this video essay. It was inspired by David Deutsch's book, The Beginning of Infinity. I have mentioned this book before in my prior videos and just wanted to take the core message and put it out there in one full video. So if you enjoyed this, thank you. Please like and subscribe. And you can watch my other videos on epistemology and reasoning, metaphysics, why we need to study philosophy. I hope you have a great day.